Hi, my name is Vineet, and I'm going to show you how high-speed imaging works using the Vision Development Module in LabVIEW NXG. If we take a look at what we have set up here, I've just got a basic LabVIEW program already written. In fact, I can hit Run, and now I'm acquiring images. I can take a look at my, I can see my hand here as I go over the, the fan, and right now I'm just pointing this camera directly at, this, uh, at these fan blades. Let's go ahead and start up the, the fan so we can see it, we can see it moving around. And in this, in this case, if we look at the diagram, there's just some really basic code here. I can walk us through it. So the first thing that I'm doing is just giving a reference to that, that particular camera, and I'm passing it over to the initialize function from iMacDX. I'm then passing it over to the snap function in iMacDX, which is taking one image at a time. So the snap is a software-timed function that lets me capture one image at a time, and then I'm passing that over to the image display that we just saw. Of course, with any kind of vision application, I'm also wanting to do good memory management and buffering. And so in this case, I'm creating an image and I'm allocating memory for that image in this function, passing it through, and then, and then disposing of that, of that memory location at the end. I've also added a little bit of code down here where I'm basically just monitoring the speed of this loop. I have a loop timer where I'm checking the, the number of milliseconds in, the, in the, current, the current system time, and I'm passing it through a feedback node and then subtracting the next timestamp in order to get the delta. And based on the delta between those timestamps, I can basically see how fast that loop is running. And since I'm capturing one image per iteration of the loop, that gives me my frames per second, or my FPS. In fact, I have a little indicator here. I can double click on it, and it takes me back to the, the front panel. And I'm measuring that loop time to be somewhere around 20 to 25 uh, frames per second. Well, this particular camera can go much faster than that. So how can I use Vision Development Module and iMac DX to get higher speed imaging um, well, let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to stop the program. And the first thing to do is, over in, in the diagram, is to go to my hardware interface palette. I can go over to iMac DX. Again, iMac DX is the driver software that allows me to connect and, and interface with uh, industrial cameras. In this case, I have USB 3, but I could be using gigabit Ethernet as an example. And if I click on iMac DX, the functions that I used previously take advantage of the snap function. Snap functions are really easy to, to program. They don't require as much configuration. I can just snap one image at a time, but they're not very optimized for speed. It just brings one image at a time into the application software memory. Instead, to go faster, I'm going to drop down the configure grab function. I'll drop it here for now. And then I'm also going to drop down, right here, I'm also going to drop down the grab function. Let's go ahead and delete the snap function because we don't need that anymore. And I'm going to move the, uh, the initialize iMac DX function over to the left so that I can go ahead and, and make some space. I can then wire that into the loop. And I can drop down my grab function in place of where my snap function was. I can wire up the image reference. I can wire up the wire that goes over to this create image function. And then I can also wire out those same uh, those same wires over to the rest of my program, the error cluster, and then of course the, the image itself. Well, the grab function is used in order to create a circular buffer in driver memory. So it's higher performance where I can stream frames of, uh, of image data directly into the driver memory, and it already manages a circular buffer in order to, to really, uh, in order to really maximize the amount of images that I can, that I can capture from a higher performance camera. And then from there, I can pull those images out of driver memory into the application memory using this grab function and then display it over on the image. Now because the actual image rate and the frame rate is now happening at the driver level and it's not necessarily happening at the loop, I can use a, I can use a function in order to measure exactly what that image capture rate is. And so I can come over to the vision palette. So I can go to analysis, vision. And in this case, I can go to the vision utilities palette and go over to image management. Image management was the same place I went to originally to, to use the create image function before in order to create the memory location. But now I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to calculate, this one down here, calculate frames per second. So this allows me to, to really understand exactly how fast I'm calculating uh, frames, how fast I'm taking frames per second. And I use the buffer number coming out of grab in order to calculate that. So I'm going to wire out of the grab function over to the calculate frames per second function. And I can right click on the processed frames output and just say create indicator. And this now gives me a lower level, this gives me lower level access to uh, the frames per second that are happening. 
So I've, I've effectively changed my snap to a grab. I've, I'm using the configure to, in order to allocate that memory in a circular buffer uh, for higher speed images and higher speed data streaming. And I'm, I'm gonna, everything else is basically the same. I'm just gonna use the exact same image display in order to sort of view it on the graph, on the, on the panel. So let's go ahead and hit run. And now you can see I'm, I'm still capturing images. It it's it's, doesn't look as different because visually my eyes and even the, the, the screen update rate might not see as much of a difference. But if we take a look at the frames per second being calculated in software, so that's the loop time that we had before, and even the lower level number that's happening in the, using the driver function, I'm getting pretty close to 200 frames per second. So I basically went from 20, 25 frames per second to 200, and, uh, and there's ways to go even faster than that as I optimize for system performance and, 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 uh, and different, types of, different types of cameras. So that's a brief way that you can switch from a lower speed snap function to a higher speed image, image streaming function using the grab function using the vision development module and LabVIEW NXG.